Hey everyone, it's Darkening Admin, and today we're back with Admin Prep, Servers and Support. In this section, we're going to cover case management. I also going to talk about how to automate case management. With Service Cloud, there's some Service Cloud licenses you need to know about. There's a Service Cloud user, which gains access to the Council for Service, Knowledge User, Chat, formerly known as Live Agent, and Customer Community licenses. A little tip, if you want to make a user a Service Cloud user, you need to check the Service Cloud user checkbox on the user record. So what is a case? This is a record that states an issue, problem, or request. You can use cases to look for trends or issues with products or services that you offer. It gives you a little insight into what's going on with that customer. So if they keep having a lot of cases or we're on the same product, maybe you need to replace that product. So you can kind of get a good feel for what's going on with them, with the issues that come up and that are reported to you. Case comments are a way to log comments about the case. They can be internal or external or not public versus public. The external ones that if they're available to put to the public allows you to see them in a customer community. If this is something that you want, you do need to enable it. It's not on by default. Case feeds. This is a different way to see the data that you want to present. So it's not your typical page layout. It's a different type of page layout. You have to create it and assign it. The whole goal is to be chatter driven. So you want it the earliest and most recent content at the top with the more outdated stuff at the bottom. You still have the details but it's not detail focused, it's more of the history and event focused of that particular case. Support processes, this is like sales processes. This is if you want to have a different status pick list option for different types of record types. So if you make a record type for cases, you need to have a support process. This support process controls the status pick list field options you want for your pick list field for the status field. So in this scenario, I have selected values, new working escalated closed, those are the selected values. If I had additional values, they'll be available in my available values. And I could create different processes for different types of things. So maybe product A needs pro support process one and product B needs support process two. You have different types of field values for those options. There's a couple of different ways cases can be created within Salesforce. There's web the case, email the case, call centers, chat, communities, and there's also SOS. With web the case, it basically allows you to create a case from the web. Email the case, creates cases from the email. Call centers is a place where people can call in, the agent picks up and they take the, the customer's information down, they create a case for them. Chat, which allows people to chat with agents. Community is another place where customers can come in to log in and they authenticate with the system and they can submit cases, check up on the status of their other cases without getting in hold of a agent. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. I produce Salesforce tips every week. And if you like this content, like it as well. With, he says you also get access to queues. So queues are typically a group of users that allow you to work the same case. The case can come around, we sign to the queue, someone in that queue can pick it up and work it. Typically queues are made up of like skilled people who can solve the problem. A lot of times the cases that they have in there, they're gonna be the same ones. Some, sometimes these cases are set up by tiers, they can be set by products. They can be set up any number of ways. So queues are a great way to assign a case to a queue instead of an individual so it doesn't get lost. So in the automation that, that's available, we have case autoresponsive rules, an organization wide email address. You can make autoresponsive rules for cases. They can be used with portals, web to case, email to case, and on-demand email. So come through one of those channels. You can use the case autoresponsive rules to send a email back to the person who submitted the case, providing that an email was provided. Next up, we have case assignment rules. Basically allows you to sign ownership of a case to a queue or user. You can only have one active process at a time. You can have multiple rule criteria for this particular case assignment rules. And then whenever you build an assignment rule, always put your most restrictive criteria at the top and your least restrictive at the bottom. That way, when your case comes in, it gets assigned to the correct person based on the criteria. If you make it too broad on the top, it's gonna to automatically hit those filters and never hit your more dynamic filters at the bottom. So always put your most restrictive criteria on the top and your least restrictive criteria at the bottom. The next one here we have is escalation rules. This allows you to escalate or elevate a case. Uh, a lot of times it's gonna be criteria based. So you can set some type of criteria. If the criteria is met, then you want the rule to fire. And you can either send it to a user or a queue and you can also send an email or, and also notify someone. A lot of times you utilize these rules when you want to have a case responded to in a certain amount of time. So let's say you want a case responded to within an hour, 30 minutes is up, you say, hey, let's go ahead and submit a escalation, no fire the escalation rule to 
notify everyone that this case has you know, been sitting in the news status for 30 minutes. One other thing to note on here is you can specify how the case times are set. So you can say when the case was created, it can be another date field on the case record. You can also set the business hours. I'm currently ignoring business hours. If I had business hours enabled and a case was submitted outside the business hours, the business, the escalation rule does not pick up till the business hours kick in. So my business hours start at eight and I submit a ticket at seven o'clock. My escalation rule won't fire till after eight starts. So once eight starts, the clock starts ticking on my escalation rule. The next way to create cases in Salesforce is email the case. It allows you to create a case from an email. Uh, you do need to set it up and once it's on, it's on. You can create a task with it as well if you need to be. And you can also set the case owner, the priority and the origin. Uh, essentially it allows you to create a email. Emails that create cases will consume your email limits in your org. You do need to work with your admin or your email admin to set up and forward the email services address that you get, that gets generated from email case routing. So the concept behind it is that you have email address and once the email address is identified, you talk to your admin, say, hey, when an email gets sent to this email address, I need you to forward it to the email services address and then the case will get created through that email address. When you generate this, you'll get a really long email address and that's the email address that you're gonna use. Service Console is just a great tool to make agents more productive. You can set up widgets, you can set up different tabs in here, you can set up sub-tabbing, so there's some real cool, function cool functionality you can do with Service Console. With knowledge, this is a place to store information for users and customers. It's been vetted so it's accurate, aka you can trust it. it allows standard responses for customers on cases. You can send this, you can send these articles to customers. It's easy to search within Salesforce. You can get statistics on the articles. Just a little side note, article types. If you're using article types, that's classic. Knowledge record types are used in Lightning. A couple of different knowledge data categories. You can have up to five category groups with three active at a time. You can have 100 category groups in each category group. You have five levels of data category groups in a hierarchy, and you can only assign eight data categories to any article. Knowledge users, readers. These are the users who need to read articles. Contributors, these are users that know business. They read, build, and publish articles. Managers are more advanced contributors. They know basically when to archive and delete articles that are no longer needed. Let's go with different types of communities. There's a customer community, which allows as a community for your customers. You need a license for this. Typically you have access to cases, accounts, articles, contacts, and products. The partner community provides a community to your partners. They typically have access to accounts, contacts, opportunities, and leads and campaigns. Sometimes they also have access to cases, articles, and products as well. An internal community, this is your customer community built just for your internal users. So maybe not all your users in Salesforce, but you want to have a spot for them to go. You could create an internal community for them to log into. Yeah, communities versus Web2 versus Email2. You want to use your communities when you want to use a community and you want users to authenticate. So if you want authentication, use a community. If you want a form for them to fill out, but you don't care about authentication, use a web case. If you don't care about authentication and you want to be quick and you don't care about the format as much, you can use email too. Thanks for coming and I'll see you next time.